All right, let's do this, everybody. Hi, how's it going today, everybody? So today's date is May the 3rd. I was about to say April there for some reason. It's May the 3rd. It's about 4.30 Central Standard Time, and we're going to talk about Bitcoin. So I um I just had to run a few errands today, so I apologize for getting on a little bit late here. And um, yeah, I've been, I've been having some weird dreams as well. Like last night, I had a dream that I was raiding Vanilla Classic yeah, in World of Warcraft. But for some reason, I was like a level 80 paladin who was a DPS for the, all the World of Warcraft players. I used to play like a super long time ago. And um, yeah, it was a 40-man raid, right, that we were doing. And they dropped some like legendary two-handed mace that was only for a paladin when we were raiding a level 60 dungeon in Vanilla Classic. And we were like rolling for it, right? And I was getting really, really pissed off in the dream because um, I was winning the rolls. I was getting the highest roll and I was the only DPS paladin, but they wouldn't actually give the item to me. Instead, they're like, yep, let's give it to the Shadow Priest. And Shadow Priest didn't even exist back then, like in level 60, right? But they gave it to this level 60 priest anyways that couldn't even you know, equip a two-handed mace, right? So I was getting, getting like super worked up in the dream and I, and I was like just spewing. So after we finished that, um, we ended up doing like Black Wing Lair, right? And then, um, and then like this hunter friend of mine, right? Like a legendary, yeah, I don't know why legendaries kept dropping, but like a legendary bow and arrow, um, it, it dropped, right? And then they gave it to this shadow priest again who can't even make use of it. So my friend and I were like, what is going on right now? We don't really understand what's going on. So we were doing like, you know, black wing lair and, and we're just raiding the entire time and, and nobody would respond to us in, in Ventrilo. Yeah, we were using Ventrilo back then, right? <laughs> so, um, yeah, it was just a weird dream of like just them ignoring us the entire time and raiding, um, you know, level 60 classic dungeon or, uh, you know, doing raids. But but these level 80 legendary items were actually dropping. So it just didn't really make a lot of sense. But the whole dream, it was just me being extremely pissed off and trying to get the raid leader's attention, right? And we were actually raiding with my old guild when I was like level 60 back then. We were It was called Chosen. And I think we were on a... What server were we on? I think it was like Archimond. Yeah, I think it was like Archimond at first. And um it was really funny because um Yeah, it just brought back a lot of memories. Like when I woke up I was just giggling to myself, like, what is going on right now? Why am I dreaming about vanilla classic dungeons right now? That was like, you know, twelve years ago or something of my life. So this is super weird dreams. But anyways, let's move on. Okay, let's take a look at coin market cap first of all, right? Yesterday we were trending around the four hundred and thirty billion dollar range, but today we're actually at we we've gained about twenty thirty billion dollars in the market cap, which is awesome, right? So we see a lot of coins are actually in the green right now, but of course some coins like EOS, Stellar, Tron, they had a really large run up already, right? So um, and IOTA also is having a massive run up because they recently released their new ecosystem. So I was mentioning for IOTA that around the two dollars and sixty to two dollars and seventy cents range, it's actually going to be a major resistance. So keep an eye on that, all right? If it starts to bullish or sorry bearishly diverge there, it's going to be a very good signal for you guys to actually short the market. I'm just going to lower my camera here a little bit so you guys can actually see some of my hand gestures as well when I'm talking. So, so other than that, let's take a look at across the board. Ethereum Classic (ETC) is always doing very well. Um, I actually ended up adding. Ethereum Classic to my watch list today. I missed the breakout, guys. I missed the breakout. I've been I've been eyeing this the entire time. Okay, I've been eyeing this the entire time. I even drew in my symmetric triangle. Okay, I said to myself that if um if this actually breaks upwards, I'm probably gonna go long on it as soon as it crosses the the five um this art this right here. Okay, across as soon as it crosses the um the 55 EMA there, I was gonna go long on it. But um, I missed my chance because I was actually making this video. Sometimes it happens. But you guys can see clearly I've been drawing my patterns in there fairly well, right? Let's go. Okay. C'est la vie. You don't catch them all. So um, let's take a look at Bitcoin's 24-hour volume, guys. Definitely has gone up. Okay. It's definitely gone up. I can just tell right away. There we go. So if you guys notice, from April the 22nd all the way to May the 2nd, 
which is a whole week span, we never really got over $9 billion, right? And remember where I was talking about how if we can actually average, okay, if we can average over $10 billion a day, that's going to be pretty much considered entering a bull market, in my opinion. Because if you actually look for the past, say, 12 months, just as an example, okay, if you guys notice here, prior to the downtrend, right, where, you know, December 17-ish, actually, we'll say January 22nd, that's where a lot of the volume was, where we're averaging well over the double digits in the actual billions. And right now, we've trended for the past week between about 9 billion to 7.5 billion. But today, all of a sudden, we've jumped up a pretty astronomical amount, which makes me very happy. Let's catch you guys up with where we ended up before with my Bitcoin technical analysis. It's always good for you guys to stay caught up. So here's the bearish view that I mentioned that I was drawing yesterday. I was drawing this symmetric type of triangle and I mentioned keep an eye on this symmetric triangle. This is the bearish view where we would possibly test 8750 if we broke down. But here, here's the bullish view guys. A break above 9750 or 9750 range and we'll easily see guys. 9767 around that kind of range we'll see 115 or 1175 and that was the play to take guys any breakout above 92 93 9400 then you guys should have been targeting roughly the 9900 range but of course we never actually got there so instead of about a seven percent gain you guys probably got about a six percent gain which is still a very massive amount when you think of it right so very, very good gains there. And congratulations to the people that actually take my technical analysis to heart while also factoring it in your technical analysis as well. So it's really good to take a technical analysis from many different perspectives, right? You take it from the left, you take it from the right, you take it from wherever, and then you, f you eventually draw a consensus. And with a consensus, it's always gonna give you the best possible view. Never follow anyone's technical analysis blindly. So here, here's basically where it, it kind of was, right? Yesterday, just to show you guys where we were trending, okay? We were trending pretty much just like that. So that was the play to take, guys. Honestly, it was the play to, to take, you know, right breaking out right around 9,200, right? That would have been an incredible play for you guys to take. Here is the risk to reward ratio that I was mentioning as well to consider. I, I drew it around here, right? Just in case we broke out at a different place. But you know what? Um, where did I actually draw it in here? Let's confirm. Let's to make sure that I'm not just uh, being full of myself, right? <laughs> so um, here, here's the one that I suggested to enter um, right here. So as you guys can see, it's right around the 9200 range, right? 9250-ish, 9250-ish range. So if you guys got in right on this breakout right there, the risk to reward would have been quite amazing, right? You would have targeted roughly 9,900. It didn't quite hit it, which is okay. Your stop loss would have been somewhere inside of this symmetric triangle. Um, I think my risk to reward was a little bit different. It was about four-ish. So you would have had an easy risk to reward ratio of about four to one. It didn't quite hit it. Instead of getting that you know 7.5% gain I was mentioning, you could have got yourself an easy 6% gain. If you guys had played a $10,000 position, right, you would have easily made yourself a quick $600. If you played $20,000, you would have made yourself 1.2K. Did I take any of it? No, not at all. <laughs> I wasn't even around. I wasn't uh, here at all for this when this happened. It's okay. You don't catch them all. As long as you try to catch some of them, right? That's what Warren Buffett said. You are not. He Warren Buffett thought that Facebook and things like Amazon was... You know, not the future. And they asked him, how did you miss these, right? How did you miss these mega giants? And he said that it is not about catching every single one. It is making sure that you spot only some of, some of them and catch some. So make sure you guys remember that, that you're never going to catch every single trade. But try your best. Try your best to catch a lot of them and you're going to be on your way to success. Don't mind me today. I'm super casual. It's actually really cold outside. Um, for the past few days, it's been like, you know, plus, well in the plus, like, you know, plus, 
like seven, eight, ten, right? That's pretty warm around this time here where I am. But now we're like, you know, two, three degrees, it feels like outside. So it's getting a little bit cold again. So we're going to take a step back, right? We're going to take a step back here and just talk about what's been going on thus far on the log scale. So try to draw it from a log scale if you guys are drawing it from a longer time frame. So this makes a lot of sense now since we're looking back all the way on December 17. So the best time to have entered a trade for Bitcoin was around the 8,500 range right here, right? When, when you guys see a massive resistance like this, you need to think about it from the perspective of teamwork, right? Think of it like you're working as a team. Even if you're playing with a small account or a large account, you have to adopt that kind of teamwork mentality where um, you got to try to shatter these resistances with each other. So if you are seeing this massive resistance, that's what a lot of, uh, I guess, more experienced traders will think of, right? That's why you're seeing this very large volume spike as well. So when you're seeing these large volume spikes, Try to chip in, even if it's a thousand, if it's ten thousand, if it's twenty thousand. Try to chip in as best as you possibly can. This way, you're working as a team, and you can possibly break a resistance together. Just like right here as well, right? If it was breaking upwards, chip in as a team, guys. Chip in as a team and try to go for it right there. So I don't want to hold you guys for too long today, but this is the way it's looking right now. Okay, this is the way it's looking. Our symmetric triangle ends up being coming that right there. So the way that we're looking at this is, you know, yeah, sure. 9,900, 10K-ish is kind of a resistance right now. We're just going to say like 10K, 10K-ish range, right? We'll just say right there. We'll just say 10K barrier, okay? We'll just be very, very clear. We're just going to raise it up to 10K, the psychological resistance, okay? 10k the psychological resistance so the way we should be looking at this right now is like this we see this as a possible double top so don't be confused quite yet with this becoming an ascending triangle we're just anticipating that this could possibly become an ascending triangle we see the peaks at 9667 this one was 9679 okay 96 you guys look right there 9667 this one was 97.79. So I will annotate here for you guys. Keep an eye on 97.750, range. A break above it, we first target 10K, the psychological barrier. The psychological resistance. It's always going to be a psychological resistance, 10K. All right, that's super important. So I'm just going to kind of zoom out here, actually, to give you guys a better aerial view. All right. Let's make this a little bit smaller here as well. Right there. And then the next major one is going to be right around here. These are the previous highs, right? Those are the previous highs from before, as you guys can see. Actually, right there, okay? Now, a break above 10K, I should probably draw this on the bottom side, like that. A break above 10K, a break above 10K, free air to 11,500 to 11,778 range. The reason I say 11,778 is because of this guy right there. Um, let, let me show you guys a little bit closer. Mm, where is it? Right there, 11,788, right? There you go. It's actually 788, my apologies. Could this be an ascending triangle, is a rhetorical question we'll ask. So we always like to ask these rhetorical questions, right? Could this pattern hold to be an ascending triangle, right? So let's see if it bounces 
off of here. Well, first of all, so we have to keep this in mind. This is right here are the previous two resistances, right? Previous two resist. So this is going to be kind of kind of my play right here, right? And of course, I'm going to annotate it much more for you guys to give you guys some specific plays that you can also consider. I'm just getting my steam it up here so I don't have to reload, do everything here from scratch. So don't mind me here very quickly. I just want to make sure you guys have charts, right? That's really important to me. All right. Okay, so this makes a lot of sense, right? This was the previous resistance where we double topped with our truncated fifth wave, a break above 10K, free air to 11.5 to 11.788K range. Keep an eye on 97.50 to 97.79 range. A break above it, we first target 10K, the psychological resistance. Could this pattern hold to be true, right? So am I interested in playing a, a, a breakout? Yes, I absolutely am, okay? So here's my, my plan, guys. My plan of action, which I will be incredibly detailed about, guys. Okay. So I, I plan to do this, right? I plan to play the breakout above this, this right here, okay? I plan to play this breakout with my stop loss around 9,600, I'm guessing, like that. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a crazy play, guys. This, we're talking like a, a 10 to 1 risk to reward ratio here, okay? Ooh, it's looking juicy right here. I will add, I will add 20, actually probably only 20% of my position size upon breakout of 9,000, whatever that was earlier. Um, 9,799. 779, sorry. Yeah, that's what I plan to do. Actually, I'll probably end up going 25. That makes more sense to me. Massive volume. So I will add um, more, right? This, 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 this needs to make sense where I'm just trying to lay out some of the foundations for what I plan to do. So keep in mind that I'm always talking about it from the perspective of what I plan to do, right? So I, I will add 25% of my position size upon breakout of 97.79. So this needs to be broken through, guys, okay? So I, I'll actually end up keeping my stop loss pretty tight. Like, you know what? I'm probably going to end up taking a, a risk to reward ratio of... um. It's confusing right here, right? Actually, I'm gonna I'm gonna risk very very little here, okay? Yeah, so I will add upon breakout of another uh, and keep my stop loss extremely tight. Nine thousand six hundred dollars, okay? Nine thousand six hundred dollars. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense to me. And I'll keep it extremely tight at 9,600, just in case we actually never break above 10K, right? So massive volume needs to be met, right? Histogram must be stair-stepping. Okay, this is an important criteria to me, stair-stepping um, parabolically. Okay. So that needs to be met entirely as well. MACD, let's show 
um, macho. I, I don't know how to emphasize the word. I either the macho um exp um parabolic macho a steady bullish divergence. So I'm just looking for some some criteria, right? And also RSI. must show steady bullish divergence as well, okay? So I need to have a lot of signs for me to add more to my position, right? I will take the risk. I will take the small risk to um, see if we can actually trend to 11,500 to 11,700 range. Okay, so it's very important for us to understand that we must take these types of risks. Otherwise, you never know when it's going to break out, right? So who knows, right? If it bounces again, right? If it bounces along this trend line, we might be in a very good shape for us to actually enter these types of positions. If we bounce on these this ascending triangle, uh, don't mind the sound in the background, there's company here. If we bounce on these ascending triangle supports, on these possible supports indicated above, then an ascending triangle pattern will be confirmed. Though, bear in mind that ascending triangles don't always guarantee to be breaking up that ascending triangles don't always guarantee to break up, but it does have a much higher chance to break up than to break down, okay? So let's see how this plays out. So I'm just kind of laying out the path. And what we have to make sure we understand as a trader is that we like to plan ahead, guys. Um, you know, entering a position, it's not spontaneous, guys. It's, it's completely far from spontaneous. So make sure you guys completely understand that, okay? That's how I see it all the time. So other than that, that's kind of how I plan to... to... Um, add to my position here, right? I might even be tempted to add some to my position upon, I might even be tempted to add to my position if we do bounce here, right? Not start adding, might be tempted to start accumulating rather upon bounce of the supports if they happen, if it does happen, if it happens, because this would validate my theory. So what we try to do is pretend you're a scientist, guys, okay? Just pretend you're a scientist and you are looking for, a, you have a theory, right? You've got a theory and you want to see if it actually holds true. So the best way to actually conduct your experiments to see if your thesis actually holds true is by simply just waiting, right? Waiting. You've got you got to analyze the data, right? You got to just go through the motions of performing the experiment. And sometimes your hypothesis fails, right? And, um, and you're entirely wrong about it. And you conclude that, hey, you know, it didn't work out nearly as planned. I couldn't really prove it. I have inconclusive data or it didn't work out. But some other times it holds true like that, right? And if it does hold true, and you prove your, you you prove your hypothesis to be actually true, once you gather all the evidence, right, and you go through the motions of conducting the experiment, if it does hold true, then you're actually gonna make some pretty decent money, in my opinion. So hopefully something like this does end up happening. I would be extremely excited about that. So now let's take a look at indicators, guys. All right. Let's see how indicators are actually holding up. Bitcoin has not even reached close to um, close to daily levels yet. Right now, here actually for overbought regions. So if if you guys look at the daily chart, right? Yeah, it, it's not really. It doesn't really want to go to the negative side of the histogram. It wants to stay to the positive side, right? And not only that, 
I was mentioning that we got a hold well above the 8750-ish range. Now, don't get me wrong, you guys, you know, you guys clearly have the bullish view, right? Now, we got to talk about the bearish view, guys. Okay, we got to talk about the bearish view here, okay? So if this right here is simply the bearish view, then what could possibly end up happening is that, well, this could, hmm, let's just say that this ended up double topping, right? And we end up double topping. And unfortunately, we will see a large downtrend to a much lower region. So could we have double top there? Let's hope not. So let's just say that we're doing this from the perspective of Elliott Wave, okay? If we wanted to see if this was a bearish view, according to Elliott Wave, we could actually see it many possible ways, okay? Let's say that this was actually a possible count, right? And we've gone over the count many, 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 many times before. So if this was actually the double-topped version right here, where we just got a very powerful B wave. Well, if that was the double top, then we're going to end up seeing a C wave all the way down to here still, okay? So let's just make this white actually to be consistent. Let's go to minor. Let's go to minor for this one as well. All right, so if this was a possible one, well, we just do our Elliott wave counts, right? This one hits flying colors, right? All right, wave three hits 161.8. And of course, wave four or wave five ends up hitting 261.8. Assume wave five hits 261.8. So that's kind of how we do it, right? With Elliott Wave. And we see So that's how we would assume from an Elliott Wave perspective right here that Wave 5 definitely hit it hit the mark with flying colors, guys, okay? So this double top right now, and then we would assume that the C would actually still end up coming down. And where would we assume it would possibly hit? We would assume it would hit extrapolating this white line, okay? If I were to extrapolate this right here, just around there, right? Something like that. Extrapolating this 200 moving average. Extrapolating the 200 EMA, right? We can see a hard support at the 86.50 to 87.50 range, right? So this is the bearish view that you guys need to be very aware of. So whether either one works out, great. If it doesn't actually break above our 90. 800 range, we'll say, all right, no harm, no foul, okay? Then we never actually accumulate anything. If it breaks downwards, right? If it breaks downwards, no problem at all. Then we actually got a chance to accumulate. Um, we get a chance to accumulate um, around the 8650 to 8750 range. Yeah. Some people have say to me before, oh, yeah, you're just going to guess every scenario, and eventually you're going to be right. Yeah, guys, that's what a professional trader does, okay? We look at it from multiple perspectives, and we try to account for unforeseen circumstances. Because if we try to look at it from every angle, we know exactly how to play when these circumstances actually unfold. So this is how I see it from an Elliott Wave count as well, okay? Very difficult for me to see it, it like breaking up or down. I don't... Okay, what I'm saying is... I don't really have a definitive answer of where I stand more. In fact, I'm more so 50-50 right now on the edge, right? 
So um, uh, it's very difficult for me to give an actual bias. So my bias is actually going to be entirely neutral until something actually unfolds. Unfolds. So I'm just going to say, like, keep an eye on on this particular support, right? Keep an eye on this support for the bearish view. Keep an eye on this support that breaks to validate the bearish view. Okay, so keep in mind that, um, right? So I'm just talking about this right here. So, so who knows where this could end up being, like the C region? But I'm just kind of giving you guys um, a brief idea of, you know, wh how this could actually be, okay? So other than that, there's your Elliott wave count that I've uh, that I it's one of my alt it's one of my main counts right now I have to say I've got a few more alternate counts that I'll present to you guys in a in a while and other than that I hope you enjoyed the tutorial or oh, not tutorial the um the quick tactical analysis I'd appreciate an upload on Steemit and other than that have yourselves a great day take care bye now thanks for watching and don't forget guys stay tuned all right my new lessons are coming out in a few short weeks I'm spending about six hours a day working on it right now. And they're going to be awesome, guys. People have asked me some questions like, is it going to be geared towards beginners? Is it going to be friendly towards beginners? Is it going to be geared towards intermediate traders as well, or advanced traders? And the absolute answer is, it's going to be geared towards all demographics. Whether you're new, to, if you're new to the game, it is something you definitely want to check out. Because keep in mind that I am single-handedly the most, um, the most, um, I guess I create more technical analysis videos than any single person on YouTube, right? I'm single-handedly the most, uh, the biggest YouTuber in terms of doing technical analysis. And I also have a lot of educational experience as well. I've produced over 1,000 hours, guys, of YouTube video content in terms of explaining how to do technical analysis. I've also made more than 500 videos. So my videos are just going to be geared towards people who are incredibly new to the game. They're going to be probably the most invaluable resource that you can have to teaching yourself from the very beginning. The very first lesson, for example, will be how to set up trading view and why it is important, right? Second one will be candlestick analysis and how to actually read charts and what do all this mumble jumble mean? So, and you know, the third thing we'll, we'll go over is what are technical indicators? We're going to go over everything from the actual beginning so you guys know exactly how to wrap your mind around, you know, this, this chaos, this mayhem. Um, or sorry, this madness, right? But, you know, we'll fill, find a silver lining inside of all of it. Now, for all the people that have watched my lessons before, you guys are going to see a lot of new content as well because it's going to be geared towards learning how to make money specifically. And it's going to have education in mind, but the main goal will be to teach you guys how to actually just make money, right? So other than that, have yourselves a great day. Thank you for watching my videos. Bye now.